So here we are in part two of the Code Practice Oscillator. Let's get into this thing. What did I build? Okay, the CPO, the Code Practice Oscillator. I put it in an enclosure. Um, I've experimented with several transistors in the circuit. I'll let you know how that goes uh, during this video. There was a question on these uh, old-fashioned ham radio project books. Uh, the first one is Understanding Transistors and Transistor Projects. This is an Allied Corporation uh, publication. It has a bunch of uh, good information on working with germanium transistors like the 2N107, and there's projects in here like a, you know, a home broadcaster and uh, different radios and amplifiers, things like that. Uh, second one is 101 Easy Ham Radio Projects, and uh, this is a Howard Sams publication. Lots of tube and transistor type projects, all kinds of interesting things in here from power supplies to linear amplifiers and VFOs and small flea power transmitters. This is ham radio projects, 101 easy ham radio projects. And this, this one here is actually a Tandy Radio Shack publication, 50 easy to build projects. And I think they had maybe 100 different or 150 different, anyway, there were several of these that were put out and all kinds of great projects. Here's a loudspeaker microphone, turning a speaker into a microphone, that kind of thing. Uh, oh, here's a home broadcast station. Uh, uh, Hi-fi power meter, you know, for your stereo. Electronic metronome. Anyway, lots of cool old books that you'll find on eBay and at ham flea markets and some of the uh, online booksellers. So let's get into the Code Practice Oscillator. So you guys remember that I prototyped the Code Practice Oscillator on a piece of perf board. And uh, I decided that uh, for clarity and for ease of construction that I would build the, the real thing using an ordinary terminal strip and just doing point-to-point -point wiring in the old-fashioned manner. The original Code Practice Oscillator that I got was an ICO, and it was a kit, and it was built in just that way. You built everything on a terminal strip, and it was a kind of a building exercise that taught you how to solder, and how to work with parts and lugs and transistors, resistors and capacitors, and so on. And of course the prospective novice would learn code after he built up his first electronic project. So I think the ICO Code Practice Oscillator, and there were many other companies that made similar kits, I thought that was a wonderful way to, uh, to get introduced to code. Build something. We don't have very many controls. I have a volume control, and this volume control is extremely crude. I took a 500 ohm potentiometer and put it in series with the speaker on the output of the transformer. So that's all that is. It's a very crude volume control. However, putting it in series with the speaker does mellow the tone somewhat. And we're going to look at the harshness of the waveform that we're sending to the speaker on the oscilloscope later. A crude uh, bezel looks like uh, part of something from a Halloween costume that I've cut out. A grill cloth, okay. Then we have the tone control and the key jack. That's it. Let's take a peek on the other side. Look at this construction technique. So we have our transformer and the transformer I think is double side taped or glued to the case. We have our 250k tone potentiometer. There's that volume control pod up top in series with the speaker. And there's a transistor that's in its socket a capacitor and a resistor, a key jack, and the power supply, which is nothing but a 9-volt battery. That's a pretty simple looking circuit. 
That's an easily constructed circuit. Easily constructed circuit should not be daunting to very many folks. Very easy to build code practice oscillator. Let's take it back to the bench. Let's try some different transistors and see how they act in the circuit. See if there's any adjustments that need to be made between silicon and various manufacturers of antique germanium transistors. So let's take a look at the waveform. We know that it's a little bit raucous sounding, but uh, what's the waveform actually look like? I'll get over here on the scope. Let's zoom in a little bit. Does that not look like some kind of a relaxation oscillator? Not pretty, okay? It sounds okay, but it's definitely not that pure sine wave that you would expect. And I'm right across the speaker. I just wanted to show you guys what this thing looks like. And it's nothing close to a traditional Hartley oscillator or some other type of linear oscillator where you have a nice sine wave or at least something that looks like a rounded square wave. You get what you get with a very simple circuit like this. So as you can see I've got a variety of vintage transistors and we could try a few of these in the circuit to see how it works because I've got that socket installed. Right now I have a 2N 371 PNP Germanium. 2N 371. Next I have a Soviet era MP39 and if you're not used to these transistors uh, the layout is the same as normal transistors with uh, an emitter base collector type situation. The only thing that might confuse you is the base is connected to the outer case. MP39 transistor, the MP39. Wow, it's just about the same tone that we had with the 2N371. Now, this is all dependent on the transformer based on the transformer you get. Some transformers might not work at all. So do experiment with the audio transformer that you select for this project. But the Russian transistor is virtually identical to the old American. Okay, now I've inserted another Soviet era transistor and it's an MP25A. MP25A. Ooh, here's an unmarked transistor out of one of those old Polypax packages. Remember when you used to get the transistors in the bag from Polypax? And we don't have time to test them. So here they are, 100 transistors for $2. Let's see how this guy works. Okay. The unknown transistor is oscillating. He's probably got the lowest gain of all. Well, you know, he's an unmarked transistor from uh, the 1960s. But, you know what, he's working. Okay, so I think we've pretty much seen enough. Old germanium transistors work. Let's try a silicon transistor with more gain. Okay, here's the generic 2N3906 PNP silicon.
Here's the classic 2N2905 PNP silicon transistor. That's good. So silicon transistors seem to work okay in the circuit. I didn't change anything. Still using the same emitter bypass resistor and the same tone resistor that's basically setting the bias on the transistor. So the RC time constant seems to hold up okay whether you're using silicon or germanium transistors. Okay, the old military radio net going in the background on a Saturday morning. We're now going to try to convert this thing to a Hartley oscillator. And as you can see, I have a green capacitor that I've added here with one leg not connected. So let's, uh, okay, we have the, the regular harsh tone. And now I am going to connect that capacitor. Let me solder it in place. Okay, so now this 0.1 capacitor is right across the primary of the transformer. So it should be resonant. Well, it sounds better. Let's look on the scope. Okay, a much smoother looking signal. Now this could be improved by getting the bias right on the transistor, but for now I'm going to replace the potentiometer with a rotary switch and I will switch in a series of capacitors and this will produce different resonant points which should give us some pleasant tones up through the audio spectrum. So let me solder in all of these capacitors. Some logical steps. I'll just pick some various capacitor values and put them in uh, with the rotary switch and uh, the tone should go up as I switch positions. So I have a series of capacitors on the rotary switch from a value of 1 microfarad to 0 0.01 microfarad. So I went in logical steps to give me tone steps that seemed you know, pleasant to the ear, using standard values. Now, of course, this is going to vary based on your transformer, but generally I went from a 1 mic to a 0.68 to a 0.33 to a 0.22 to a 0.1, a 0.05, and then down to a 0.01. So you have to agree that's a much smoother tone, more pleasant to the ear, but of course I had to add a rotary switch and I had to add several capacitors. So this is the reason they didn't do it this way. They could get away with a single potentiometer and a single capacitor. So it's simply cost savings. This would have been a superior circuit though much more pleasant to the ear. As you can see I've just kludged the capacitors around the rotary switch and these are all being attached right across the, the transformer. I have not changed the 10k resistor for bias uh, and I have just a general purpose PNP germanium in the circuit. I did not change the coupling capacitor, the 100 ohm resistor in the emitter, or any other value in the circuit. Now, what does it look like on the scope? Is it a perfect sine wave? No, because we haven't got the bias right. But it's a lot smoother looking than, you know, the, the funny sawtooth uh, waveform that 
produce the pulse generator in effect that we had before. Let's look at the scope. It's not a perfect sine wave, but you have to admit it's a whole new ball game in quality of tone. So again, this is the Hartley version of the code practice oscillator. All we did was resonate the transformer. It is no longer a blocking oscillator. It is now a true Hartley oscillator.